kids, welcome back. Today we are doing equations with fractions, exercise 7c. It's pretty much exactly um, similar to some questions we did last lesson. So I'm not even going to uh, write a whole bunch of notes, I'm just going to explain the questions and then um, you can get into your exercise. So um, have a look here everyone. So like I said, just a whole bunch of questions. The only way to get good at these is to practice. So we've got the first one, 4x divided by 3 is equal to 8. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of this fraction, because it's all one big fraction. So how do we do that? We need to get rid of, what's the opposite of divided by 3? It's times by 3. So we're times in both sides by 3, and then we'll cancel that divided by 3. So we get 4x equals 3 eighths are 24. If you want to show the workings out, you can. I'll just grab a different colour. Times by 3, times by 3, and the 3's cancel. But you do not need to write, do that, um, that bit of working out, what I've done there in red. Like this. The next step, it says 4 times x, so you divide both sides by 4, the 4's cancel, and you get x equals 24 divided by 4, which is 6. So, like I said, the red that I've drawn there, you do not have to do, as work is out, but you need to show each step. And there's your answer. And how would you check your answer? Substitute it back in. 4, 6 is a 24. 24 divided by 3 is 8. Yes, correct. Alrighty, next one. This whole term on the top is divided by 9. So the first step, we multiply both sides by 9. And we get 4y plus 15 equals 3 nines are 27. So I didn't show the workings out this time, but you could have written times 9 times 9, cancel the 9s. But hopefully you can understand what I'm doing without doing that. Now next step, we need to get rid of this plus 15. So we minus 15, minus 15. So we've got 4y equals 27 minus 15 is 12. And last step, divide by 4, divide by 4. So you write y equals 12 divided by 4 is 3. So this time, I didn't show my workings out each time, but that is fine. You have to show each step. You'll get full marks for that. So you don't need to do times 9 times 9. Alrighty. Let's go to the next one. Now this one's a little bit different to the last one. So this time you've got the unknown there, the pronumeral, in this little fraction. But you've got a plus 4. Plus 4 just added on to the end like that. And this is a plus 4. How do we get rid of plus 4? We minus 4 to both sides. So if you want to write your workings out, minus 4, minus 4, then they will cancel. So all we're left with now is 5x divided by 2 is equal to 29 minus 4, which is 25. It's our first step. Now this is divided by 2, so you times 2 times 2, you get 5x equals 25 times 2 is 50. That's times by 5, what's the opposite of that? Divide by 5, divide by 5, and you get x equals 10. And there's our answer. Step by step, you do one step at a time, your workings out should be nice and neat, going down the page, the equal sign directly below each, um, the one above it each time. Alright, and this is a bit of a trickier one because we've got a negative there. But remember, this number here is still, a, if I cover that up, it's still a plus 7. How do I get rid of plus 7? I'm minus 7 to both sides. Alright, so now I've got minus 2x over 3 is equal to 5 minus 7, which is minus 2. So that's our first step. Now, I need to explain something. This negative here could be, it's the same as having, you could have a negative out the front, you could have just one negative on the top line, or you can put that negative on the bottom line. It makes no difference. They are all equal to each other, as long as that whole fraction only has one negative sign. So I'm going to put the negative on the bottom line like that. So now what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by negative 3. So I times this side by negative 3, and I times that side by negative 3. And the reason why I'll do that is they'll cancel, and I'm left with 2x equals Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. So I've got rid of that negative sign. And now I just divide both sides by 2, and you get x equals 3. Going from this step again, I'll just show you here. If I wrote down, if I put the negative on the top line, so I had negative 2x over 3 equals negative 2. So I've just put it in here. See, I'll put the negative on the top line. I can now multiply by both sides by 3. I get negative 2x equals negative 6. Now I have to divide both sides by negative 2, 
and you'll get positive 3 anyway. So you get the same answer, but what I'm trying to say is that negative, it doesn't matter, you need to put it on the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter. I put it on the bottom so I can get rid of it in the first step. Alright, hopefully that makes sense. Let's do the next one, it's another example like that. Can you see here, so we've got a 10 there, how do we get rid of 10? You're minus 10 to both sides. So I've got minus 2x on 3, equals 4 minus 10 is minus 6. Alright, so what do we do here? We've got a negative, that whole fraction is negative. So I'm going to put the negative on the bottom line. It's easier if you do it this way. Now what am I going to do everyone? I'm going to, this says 2x divided by negative 3. The opposite of divide by negative 3 is times by negative 3. If you say it to yourself like that, it makes it easier. So I'm times in both sides by negative 3. Negative 6 times negative 3 is positive 18. Then divide by 2, and you get x equals 9. Alright, I want you to think about that one with a negative. That's very tricky. That's where people make mistakes. Alright, let's do some word questions now. 4 is added to x, and then this is halved. The result is 12. It's always a good idea to read the whole thing first. 4 is added to x. Some people write 4 plus x, and that's technically not right. It says 4 is added to x. So there's x, and we're adding 4 to x. Does that make sense? 4 is added to x, and then this is halved. Okay, so the whole thing is divided by 2, because it's halved. And then it says the result is 12. Okay, so from those sentences, we've got this equation. That's hard, that's one of the hardest bits, is to actually read the question carefully. Once you've written something, check, make sure that it makes sense. Have I got it right? 4 is added to x, yep. And then this is half. Yep, and the answer is 12. Good. Doesn't matter how many times you read it, as long as it works. Okay, so the whole thing is divided by 2, times 2 to both sides, x plus 4 equals 24, minus 4 to both sides, x equals 20. So the maths should be easy, it's the understanding bit that's important. Now let's go over this one here. The average of 5 and x is 20. Find the value of x. What's an average? Average is when you add the numbers up and divide by how many numbers there are. So the average of these two numbers, you'd have to add them together and then divide it by 2. So the average of 5 and x, so x plus 5, the average of those means divide it by 2. So that's the average of those, and it says the answer is 20. Whoops. Okay, so the average of those, x plus 5, and you divide it by 2, because that's an average. Add them together, divide by how many there are and it's equal to 20. So now we times by 2, we get x plus 5 equals 40. Take away 5 from both sides, and you get x equals 35. Now I want to check to make sure it's a sensible answer. We're saying the other number is 35, so this x is 35. Is the average of 5 and 35, is it 20? Let's add them up. 35 plus 5 is 40. 40 divided by 2 is 20. Good job, so we know we've got a sensible answer. So that's it for today. Exercise 7 C is there, 1 to 3. There's a lot of them. I said you can do every second one. If you're having troubles, do all of them. Do them until you get really good at them. And then 4 to 6, you can do all of those. Good job, everyone. See you soon.